Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, COVID update, uh, June 24, 2020, um, Director of Optimal Health Associates in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Go Oklahoma, center of the country where it's still sane. Um, so statistics, uh, Oklahoma had its biggest day of new COVID infections, uh, 484 that we've had thus far in this journey. Um, the United States had its biggest day thus far in the journey with 36,000 plus cases. Uh, the world, I think, was 182,000 or 188,000, which again, I think was the largest single day um, for uh, the world. Uh, in Oklahoma situation is we're well over 200 hospitalizations now. Uh, we're definitely skyrocketing uh, a lot, not as much as some of these other eight states that um, have really boomed, but we just all need to be aware now that COVID is in a, in a resurgence of the first wave. This is not the second wave. The second wave will occur in October, November. This is just a resurgence of the first wave and it illustrates several important points that um, uh, like any new virus that hits the human population, it's not so much weather um, dependent. That is a later uh, event in most viral development that they need cold. Um, now the heat outside does kill COVID within about oh, you know, 15 to 30 minutes if the temp surface temperature is over 200 degrees. Um, so I don't think outside is, is that big of a problem. I do think though that when we look at what happened over the last several weeks, a combination of easing of restrictions at the end of May combined with Memorial Day weekend, combined with the demonstrations all led to a, a much greater uptick than we were probably expecting, but we were expecting one. I've had a few people message, well, what about the Trump rally? Is that gonna affect things? And the answer is yes, but it's not affecting anything now, nor will it for probably at least another week um, to two weeks, and then we'll start seeing those incremental increase from that also. Uh, so we'll just have to take it all in stride and, and go from there. Uh, the big thing is, uh, the age group is 20 to 40 is the predominant age group getting it now. Um, so that again correlates more to other activities that I talked about. Um, and so we'll just have to see. Thankfully, they're not the group that gets really sick. They may get flu symptoms or cold symptoms, but it's, it would be the very rare person in that age group that got um, significantly ill. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for all of those people who are um, infected throughout the country and having new infections. Uh, again, the standard things to do that we must do um, is masks, uh, wash our hands, um, socially distance when possible, and then take your vitamins. Uh, the interesting thing is, you know, the caseload has come up enough in eight states that New York is uh, not gonna let people in unless they do a 14 day quarantine. I don't remember us doing that to them, but that's interesting that that's gonna be their approach. Uh, likewise, it's not Oklahoma. We're not at the point where we're gonna fall into that category, but definitely Texas, Arizona, and a lot of these other states already have. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that our volume of cases doesn't go up so much that Oklahomans will be banned from going places uh, because <laughs> being in Oklahoma the entire summer and never getting to go to Colorado or somewhere would be horrible. Uh, so <laughs> but because it gets so hot here and miserable. So the things we need to just remember about all of this is what do we do if we get exposed? Call your doctor. Um, I would ask for the Plaquenil. I think we had, I mean, we're so far this week, we've had two to three people every day um, exposed and call and then have telemedicine appointments. And we've um, done the zinc pulse, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams each hour, roughly. Now getting all 200 milligrams in in four hours can be a little hard. So just getting it in within 12 is fine too. Once you've done that, um, you take two days off the zinc and go back on it daily. Now the question may come up that, well, I got exposed and it's five days later and I feel really sick all of a sudden. What would I do then? Would I do zinc again? Yes, you would do zinc. You do another pulse. You can do two pulses a week. We actually um, are have a study set up that's gone through an IRB, an investigational review board, which we're gonna roll out in the fall before the second wave for healthcare providers, uh, where they're gonna, we're, we'll have people do, uh, it's gonna be 150 milligrams or 50 milligrams three times um, 
a day on, let's say, Monday, and they can repeat that after Thursday if they get sick um, later in the week. If they don't, they just do it every Monday. And that, so that's very similar in this situation. Um, again, multivitamin super important, melatonin super important, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, everyone's going to get exposed in the next six to 12 months. Uh, many people are going to get infected. It's just a matter of, is your immune system ratcheted up? So if you do get infected, it can fight it off safely. Um, if your immune system's ratcheted up, you may not even get the infection. So, you know, that's kind of the goal is to either make you not get the infection because your immune system's ratcheted up or make the infection much more mild, which would be the trend of all the information we have. Um, because who's getting the virus that gets really sick? It's older people and it's really complex sick people. And both of those groups have a common theme, which is they're nutritionally poor. And nutritional status is everything for this. It's like I said yesterday, it's not immuno immunology in terms of your immune status. It is your nutritional status. If your immune system's a little ratcheted down, so because of a chemotherapeutic agent or something, you're not turning out to be as high of risk for getting really sick because your immune system can't overreact to the virus. You may get the virus, you may get sick from the virus, but then overreacting to the virus seems to be less likely because your immune system can't do that because it's already being manipulated um, to do things for us um, in terms of if you have cancer or you have a rheumatologic disease. So that's the things we just want to focus on right now. Um, other subjects to just keep in the back of your mind, um, the second wave will be here in the fall. Um, vaccines, um, small possibility of a vaccine being ready. Again, it would be a rushed vaccine, so not something that we would be very, I would be feel very strongly about people doing, and I absolutely don't think they should be mandated. Uh, in terms of other medications uh, coming out, uh, there's really nothing new. There's no new antivirals. I think we have uh, the initial information we need on how to approach this with um, zinc and Plaquenil. And if people get more sick, steroids and getting right in, um, getting the care you need immediately is very important. The challenge, again, for everyone is if you do get exposed, being able to locate a physician who will write for the Plaquenil because it's really, thanks to the FDA, become inordinately complex. So again, stuff we just have to think about. Kim, is there anything else I need to mention? You did have another zinc question. Um, is there any kind of topical zinc or IV zinc? There's no IV zinc. Now, I routinely give out uh, elderberry zinc lozenges in the practice. Whenever I have someone who I saw two people yesterday who had travel plans and I just happened to have purchased like 200 bags or 300 bags of elderberry zinc lozenges. Um, and so I just give those to my patients who mention they're traveling because we're, I always talk about COVID and that's a nice little thing I can do for people. So here's these elderberry zinc lozenges that don't taste horrible like Zycam. Zycam is a great product. So when you have uh, Zycam, which has zinc in it and it dissolves in your mouth, or you take elderberry zinc lozenges and dissolve in your mouth, they coat the surface and make it much more likely to fight off um, any virus for that matter. Um, the other thing again is doing nasal rinses, uh, the neti pot, and, in, and that's always with um, water that's oh, um, distilled. distilled. Thank you. I was looking for the word. 56 has not been kind to me so far. <laughs> so, so distilled water, not tap water, because there's a theoretical possibility of getting an infection from tap water. Um, and those things make your mucosal surfaces great, so you're less likely to get infected anyway. So that, those are the topicals. Um, there's no gels. Uh, there's no, it, Currently, there's some gels, interestingly enough, zinc gels, um, coming out and being studied for prevention of transmission of herpes and um, potentially HIV and uh, HPV. Um, but... Uh, that's more in the realm of gynecology, which I will spare everyone the anatomy of how we would apply those and use those for prevention. But those are in um, phase two and three trials. Uh, but there's nothing uh, there's nothing available um, 
for uh, over-the-counter use right now or even prescriptive use for zinc. Likewise, we don't do zinc um, IV infusions. Um, we do do IV infusions in our office for a variety of things of vitamins, and again, those always help your immune system. Vitamin C, definitely, when there's critically ill patients with COVID, it's been shown to be quite helpful. Um, so just again, on a daily basis, taking a vitamin C tablet. So I'm rambling a little bit, but uh, that's what I wanted to focus on tonight. We have the virus, it's here, it's gonna keep on going, and we just have to be prepared to be exposed to it and not panic and get it taken care of as, as fast as we can. So good night. I probably won't be talking to you tomorrow night. This guy back behind me, uh, Hugo, is graduating from high school. Um, and so we're doing an out, there's an outside graduation and we're socially distancing and we're wearing masks and there's a limited number of people per student. So there's a whole bunch of very well thought out rules by the high school administration and I give them a lot of credit for making the effort to try to come up with something that was safe and effective and they really have um, at the high school we go to. So big shout out to everyone at uh, Heritage Hall. Um, thank you very much for putting that all together. We couldn't do it without you. Um, and just listen to David Holt. He has a clue. Um, the mayor of Tulsa has a clue. The mayor of Norman has a clue. So as people um, start making suggestions on limiting activities, if need be, we do need to follow them, unfortunately. Um, so please listen to the powers that be. Anyway, good night and take care. Be safe.